Well, welcome, one and all, to the road to recovery. Here, in the pain cave, doing what we all love, turning the legs on the Watt Bike Pro. I want to start by saying a massive and heartfelt thank you to everybody for your incredibly kind and often very generous support following my accident. I'm extremely touched. And additionally, thanks also to many of you for reaching out with your own stories of injuries and how you've personally overcome them and recovered. It's really, really good for me to hear at this time. And kudos to you all. It just shows the strength of people out there. I've now replied to all of the comments and I feel extremely privileged to be a very small part of such an incredible and caring community. In the comments, many of you said, Phil, do not rush your recovery. And absolutely, that is very much in accordance with the professional advice I've been given from the doctors and the nurses and the occupational therapists in the NHS, and also Phil Burt, one of the UK's leading physiotherapists an expert on cycling who I'm going to work with once the vertebrae are healed and the neck and back braces are off and I'm able to do physiotherapy work. 100% I'm taking this recovery slow and steady and in line with the advice. And Phil also reaffirmed what so many of you said. It's very important to avoid the temptation of trying to go too fast too soon when coming back from an injury because that could actually create longer term and adverse ramifications to your future health. Indeed, as so many of you said, Phil reiterated the importance of going slow, especially in these first six weeks while the bones and the vertebrae and the fractures heal properly. And if I do so, that will mean I recover faster overall in the long term and sustainably. So this video is being filmed four weeks after my operations and five weeks after the crash. There have been ups and downs, it hasn't been a linear process. Lots of headaches, sometimes migraines, backache, but gradually starting to trend in the right direction. Again, thanks for your best wishes in that respect. Now my weight before the crash was 63 kilograms. And as you'll see now, it fell to a low of about 59 kilograms. Oh, what with the broken jaw, the broken teeth, the semi-liquid diet, the inactivity and the muscles atrophying, here is a new low point in terms of my weight, probably over the last 25 to 30 years. I'm certainly looking to bring that back up to a much more healthy level, especially once I'm able to eat properly. Basically, smashing up your jaw and your teeth and having to have a liquid diet of baby food, soup and super soft breads and jam will do that alongside the atrophy of the muscles. I have been trying to eat more and I gradually built the weight back, as you see now, to a stable 60.5 kilograms the last week. For the last week I've been stable at about 60.5. Hoping to bring it up a little bit further. Now there are four good reasons why you see me here in this upright position in the neck and back braces on the Watt Bike Pro. And you just see a little bit of footage of me completing a 20 minute effort that was well within my current capabilities. Number one. I had a really good conversation, a telephone conversation with Phil Burt. And we talked about what can I do to improve my cardiovascular fitness during this initial six week period post operation when the bones are healing. And Phil was very clear, cycling puts less stress on the back than walking. And therefore, if I can cycle in an upright position in the neck and the back braces, without bending or twisting the torso, or dropping the hips, and inadvertently twisting the torso, then that's gonna be good for building my cardiovascular health. And that's been verified by the local NHS physiotherapist, 
who's come to the house to make sure she's happy with my position on the bike, but very importantly, happy with how I get onto the bike and get off the bike in order to again avoid twisting the torso and inadvertently dropping the hips and bending the back and damaging in particular the TA vertebrae. Here's how I have to get onto the bike. I've got to avoid throwing the leg across the saddle and twisting the torso. Thank you ever so much, Lucy, my NHS physio here locally. Two hands on the saddle, one leg over the seat, twist. Twist at the hips, not the torso. Then place one foot on, up onto the saddle, core as tight as possible, chest up, look down, place left foot into the other pedal. And you can see here, she's happy with the back being a little bit down because it's dead straight. There's no flexion in the back and there's no torsion to the right. Also, she's very happy that my position is stable and the hips are not dropping at all. Because if the hips drop, that can inadvertently cause the back to twist and there to be undue pressure on my T8 first brain in particular. Then to get off, again, at the end of the effort, you need to warm down a lot, make sure you're well rested and ready to get off. Flip out on the left side, down onto the floor. Flip out on the right side, again, down onto the floor. Then, turn, movement at the hips, foot over the bar, and you can see here, I'm using this to stabilize myself at all times, and then I can turn around. Job done. Now Phil suggested I build up from spinning the legs for 20 minutes and gradually increase the time and the effort, but always focus on staying away from intensity and the upright position. And I've done that. I built up from 20 minutes to 30 to 50 minutes a day. But I only ever do the effort for 20 minutes. I once learned a long time ago that 20 minute efforts are quite good for building general fitness. And I'm always staying well within my current capability from a heart rate and cardio perspective. Number two, they'd also noted that after the initial period for the bones healing, when cyclists come back to training properly on the bike, they can sometimes pick up knee injuries. And that's because during the healing process, the initial healing process, the muscles weaken, the stabilizing muscles weaken as well, and the body and the legs are not used to the circular pedaling motion. Hence, it's easy to pick up an inadvertent knee injury. So these little efforts here, this time in the upright position on the watt bike, fingers crossed, will hopefully prevent against that. Number three, the incredible Dr. Smith at Leeds General Infirmary, he's head of neuro and spinal rehabilitation there, had a really good conversation with me, where he said, look, Phil, after you've had a big knock to the head, you're gonna have damaged a lot of the very important connections between different cells within the brain and different parts of the brain. Those connections are integral to our thought process. And they're always being built and kind of destroyed by the brain naturally in the ordinary course of life as we improve our thought process. So inevitably, a big knock to the head has really hurt my cognitive ability. Definitely, that's been apparent in how long it takes me to make decisions and think things through. I've definitely been a lot slower. So undoubtedly, I need to help myself rebuild those neural connections, those connections between the brain cells. And Dr. Smith was very clear that all the evidence is categorical in that strong cardiovascular health helps support the rebuilding of the connections and therefore neurally and cognitively 
will help my brain recover. He also made the point, cardiovascular health is critical for this as we age, which is certainly pertinent to me and many of you. Hence, another incredible benefit from cycling. So he was very supportive of this approach, providing I do nothing to twist or bend the lumbar spine of the bike. He said, getting out of breath is gonna be really important to your neural recovery. And finally, number four, as Alison pointed out in the comments, but also Dr. Smith endorsed in the conversation, mental well-being, psychological health is really important to the overall recovery process. And for sure, spinning the legs here on the watt bike and the 20 minute efforts and gradually building the power and a little bit of the endurance fitness has been really uplifting for me. It leaves me feeling a lot more happy and rested and calm for the rest of the day. I feel like I'm going forwards. So kudos Alison for some excellent advice. Holding 225 watts, three minutes to go. So as you just saw, over the last 10 days, I've gradually built up my 20 minute efforts from 130 watts, and believe me, I was pooped after those 130 watts, in increments of 10 or 15 watts to 225 watts today, and I'm super chuffed with that. Now 225 watts, used to be my old lactate threshold one, the point at which lactate starts appearing in the blood. It felt much more like a threshold effort, a hard effort today to do that, but as I say, it was well within my capabilities. So what I'm intending to do now is take Mark Bentley's excellent advice and really now work not on further building the power, but on spending a little bit longer 180 to 200 watts and see if I can bring the heart rate down a little bit there in order to build fitness and avoid putting undue stress on the body during the final two weeks of this critical bone repair phase. So thank you Mark, great tip and I'm going to go with it. So as you can see, I'm hugely focused on doing the small things within my own control in order to recover during a six week period, but not running too fast, doing nothing to impair my long-term recovery. And I also wanna show you some of the exercises I do in bed each morning before I get up to keep the lower body muscles fired up and hopefully to stop them atrophying, i.e. Like withering away. And these have been advised by the experts at Leeds General Infirmary Hospital, the occupational therapists, in order to keep the glutes, the hamstrings, the quads, and the core as active as possible. Because of course, when all these braces come off, I'm not gonna have the same core strength as I once had as a result of all of the gym work and the work out the saddle and the bike. And a strong core is of course gonna be integral to both fitness progression, but more importantly, prevention of injury. And on day three after the operations, the occupational therapist at Leeds General Infirmary Hospital came to visit, and she told me something that was music to my ears. Phil, you've got to kind of activate as many muscles as you can while you're confined to the bed and during the initial six week um, recovery phase while the bones are healing. So I've been doing this bed-based complex, gradually building the reps, over time, most days, really to fire up the muscles and stop them withering away. And what I've been doing is 30 leg raises, like this, really squeezing the glutes, the hamstring, and the quad on each of those, with a brief pause at the top. Then 30 clams, like this, really squeezing as hard as I can the glute, building to 30 reps, as I say, for each of those, and then repeating on this leg. And as soon as I've done that, I then go into a leg raise crunch, really to activate the core. Because as I just touched on, the core is integral to basically future injury prevention as well as athletic health. 
And what I'm doing is initiating the movement by squeezing the core to lift the legs and squeezing it hard at the top, as follows. And I've gradually built up to 50 reps of those. And I repeat that little complex twice. But hopefully it will be helpful to feel burnt when I hit the physiotherapy in a couple to three weeks time. Well, as ever, the post-ride nutrition remains very much on my mind, albeit it still remains somewhat different to how it's been in the past. The teeth are broken. They're gonna take at least another five, six weeks and probably four to five operations to fix here. One of them may even have to be completely taken out. So liquids and super soft foods and chewing on this side of the mouth is very much part of the equation. So check out the fridge. We've still got plenty of air this kitchen here. You can see loads of soups and easy to eat yogurts and mousses. Plus, I'm trying to get my fruits in through the cold pressed kind of variety. Huel, I've been loving the Huel. It's been a real revelation to me. Obviously, I'm not sponsored by anybody, but the Huel tastes great. And this is the vanilla. It's definitely my favorite, but I'm not able to tip the head back enough to down it in one, so cheers. Mm, delicious. Now my mum is very much trying to fatten me up. The Huel has carbs in it, good carbs, but my mum has cooked me up some naughty carbs. She's delivering about half a cake every half a week and I am getting my way through it. There we go, let's give a generous slice here. Oh. Look at that, the Victoria sponge, soft and delicious. Mum, thank you ever so much. To get in extra vitamins, minerals and nutrients, I'm still using the Phil Richards Ultimate Green Supplement and the Vitamin C Plus. But alongside these cold pressed juices, I'm hopefully getting all the vitamins, minerals and nutrients I need to help the body recuperate. Well, with the time on a bike increasing from 20 to 30 minutes each session at endurance pace to 50 to 60, I found that my weight has come down from the 61 kilograms that it had built up to just a 59.5 here. They who spin together, stay together, hopefully. <laughs> See how long I can sustain 200 watts for. I report back. So just over one week on from when I completed 20 minutes at 225 watts, here I've just completed one hour averaging 201 watts and I'm super, super happy with that. I'm thoroughly enjoying so far the process of gradually rebuilding the fitness, basically from scratch. Each little step forward is very gratifying and you have to accept also sometimes a step backwards to take a couple of steps forward. But so far, really enjoying myself, really absorbed here on the Watt Bike Pro. Gonna be staying indoors for some time to come. It's gonna take a while to build the confidence to venture back out. And also gonna have the braces on for at least another week to two weeks. Um, still waiting to find out when my hospital appointment is to scan the vertebrae to see if the bones have healed. But in the meantime, whoever you are and whatever you do, thanks ever so much for your very kind support and live, thrive and stay safe and healthy.